Hi, greetings everyone. Um, welcome to another training session in SAP. Um, it's your SAP consultant, Kelly Chikeli Adele. Um, I hope you had a nice day. Okay, so today we're actually going to be looking at a very um, important um, functionality in the SAP system. We're focusing on the FRICO module. For today, we're going to be looking at a topic called the cash journal. And uh, we're going to see how we can process uh, petty cash transactions in SAP. Now, basically, in some companies, depending on the requirements, they set out some forms that is used to, um, in most cases, run uh, office expenses. And the budget for this uh, fund could vary from you know, one company to another. But the purpose of the cash journal actually is to keep track of um, expenses and revenues that come into this particular fund. So basically, instead of using your FB50 to post transactions to um, um, affect your expenses, this is a special journal that is used to track receipts, payments, uh, into the um, uh, cash, into the cash that has been pre-reserved for such purpose, which is called in most companies your petty cash. And um, also to record expenses that have been paid out of this petty cash in one screen. So unlike your FB50 where you have to go from one screen to another, for your cash journal, all the transactions are posted in one screen. You can print receipts, you can also see the details of each of these transactions. I mean. It's a very beautiful functionality to help you manage such forms. So let's um, get into um, the topic for the day and um, see what we can learn. Okay, so about the culture and SAP, um, of course, in this tutorial, we are actually going to look at the functionality of the cash journal which is used to record all transactions involving cash. Um, basically, in a screen, other than um, using your journal entry FB50 to enter these transactions. Now, there are certain business transactions predefined to post in the cash journal, such as the cash receipts, cash expense, and cash withdrawal from bank. So basically, um, the cash journal is a predefined uh, transaction it has predefined business transactions so the expenses that are actually the expenses the funding of the cash journal are already predefined and configured to meet certain kind of expenses and um, this configuration actually is done by the consultants okay so let's know more about the cash journal it is the online cash book for posting such transactions as single, of course, basically the idea is that you do these postings in a single screen. That's the beauty of the cash journal. Of course, um, you can also see the balance real time of your um, cash on hand. And you can also see the history of the transactions that has happened in the cash journal. The cash journal also gives you the functionality to print um, receipts or print cash journal documents uh, if that is a requirement. The transaction code used to um, post your cash journal transactions is called FPCG. Okay, so basically some of the advantages is that um, ability to post all transaction related to cash receipts and payments in a single screen of course, you can see daily, weekly, and current period uh, reporting for your cash. This could uh, give you your daily cash position, um, total cash receipts and cash payments, and of course, the balance 
Um, you can also um, easily print uh, cash journal, cash transaction receipts. Uh, so basically, prevents negative cash balance. You know, and very very simple to configure from the configuration um, screen. So it's a functionality, like I've explained, that is used to manage your impressed, what we call petty cash, depending on what the policy of the organization actually is. Now, posting um, cash journal in SAP, uh, the transaction code, as I've told you, to post your cash journal is FBCJ, quite a very um, popular transaction code. And when you run your FBCJ, it takes you to this screen. Um, you can see the different options at the header part. The save button is used to save the cash journal. Um, you can use the post to post transactions in the cash journal. You can use the print cash journal to print, um, to get printouts from your transactions. Um, you can change the cash journal. Uh, uh, set up because um, the configuration is done at cash journal level. You can choose the particular cash journal you want to use. Some countries have, some companies have impressed for different currencies. So you can actually determine the particular cash journal you want to use. If you want to pay, make payments in USD, you have to select the USD cash journal. If you want to make payments in other currencies, you have the ability to select the particular cash channel you want to use. Okay, so you have editing options, provides uh, video options to record transaction in the cash channel, depending on the business requirements. So basically this is what the cash channel um, screen looks like. When we go into the SAP, we're going to explain in details. We have the period within which the cash channel is being displayed. You can view your cash journal according to different time periods. Then you have the three basic transactions in the cash journal, cash payments, cash receipts, and check receipts. Then you have where you put in your business transaction. And we're going to see the details of this when we get into SAP. <clears throat> okay, just still explaining the windows in uh, the cash journal. Now we have the cash payment tab. Cash payment tabs are the payment made towards small purchases. So basically, the cash payment handles payments out of your petty cash journal. The cash receipt records inflow into your petty cash or your cash journal, most likely from the bank or from um, sales, depending on what the business case is. Then you have check receipts, uh, of course, payments into the impress using check. VI uh, bank checks actually. Okay, so let's go into our SAP and run this transaction code. And uh, we're going to see in detail these tabs and uh, to actually begin the process of posting a cash journal. Okay, so I'm just going to go. Sorry, let me uh, log in. Okay, so remember the transaction code is FBCJ. So go to FBCJ. Okay, so this is what the cash journal uh, window looks like, as I was um, explaining here. Um, we have the different tabs and the different uh, tabs used to enter transactions. But let me explain further. Now you have the display period. This display period controls the display balance in your header document. Um, you can see balances for today. You can see for this week. You can see for, uh, for current period. Um, you can also use the display period. You can edit the display period to show you periods that uh, you want to actually see. So if you make transactions in a previous month, you can actually run that for a previous month and it will give you the uh, cash journal for that period. Also, um, of course, you have seen the breakdown on the table here. The total cash received according to this period is displayed. 
the check receipts is zero, the cash payments is 50. Of course, um, cash receipt minus cash payment gives you your uh, closing balance. And of course, you have the number of transactions. Very important is the cash journal um, area. Here, you select the particular company code you want to run this cash journal in, and you select the particular cash journal. So like I said, if you click the drop down, you can have different cash journal for different kinds of transactions. You can have cash journal for USC, cash journal for, for Euro. Basically, these cash journals will have different currencies and you can use them to actually enter your cash journal transactions. Also, of course, in your table, you have three very important transaction areas. When you want to do a cash payment out of your journal, out of, out of your cash journal, use cash payments. When you want to get uh, receive uh, funds into your cash journal, use your cash receipt. When you have check receipt, you use your check receipt to do those transactions. Okay, so I'm going to go to a date. Let me change this to 18th to 18th. So you're going to see for 18th, there are actually no transactions and the opening balance is actually zero. So I'm going to use the dates for an example, and I'm going to show you how to post transactions in your cash journal. Okay, so basically, I've been able to explain these various tabs and what they are used for. Then you have your various um, um, field selections. But before we go to the field selections, we're going to actually enter our first journal. The field selections are the tabs just uh, the, uh, on top of your table. You have the business transaction, let's see. So you have the business transaction it specifies the type of transactions entered in the cash journal. So depending on the kind of transaction you want to do, like we said, I said previously that these transactions are already predefined. So they are not open like your FB50 where you can select any GL you want to use to post your transactions. In the particular journal, the consultant or whoever is in charge should have predefined those expenses that will qualify to be in the cash journal. Because amount you use to enter the amount. Um, document status gives you the status of the document, red and yellow and green. And when we post transaction, you're actually going to see how the status works. Um, of course, your tax code, if those transactions are subject to either input or output part, then you have the option of selecting a particular tax code. The GL, of course, uh, this business transaction is actually tied to a GL, such that um, you don't have to select the GLs, especially for expenses. You have to just select the expense, expense and the GL is populated. Then all that tabs like your check number, the receipt, text, they're just basic tabs that you use to complete your business transaction. So let's go into um, the system, I've also showed you about the company code area and the cash journal area, which you can use to select a particular cash journal. Uh, so basically we have here post cash payments. So let me just edit this. Okay, so how do we actually um, post payments uh, from our cash journal. But I'm going to check, you can see as at this date, we don't have any opening balance yet. So I'm going to start with cash receipts so that I have a particular value to post from. Okay, so um, let's do this. So um, the business transaction is that we have actually approached our manager or the finance manager to request for a for some money to actually fund a cash journal and um, uh, transfer. We have received instructions and uh, funds has actually been provided for the cash journal and it's in physically in our safe. However, 
we need to post this transaction that we have received funds into our cash journal from the bank. So first of all, make sure you're in the cash receipt um, tab. Um, go to the business transaction, click the drop down. It's going to display the list of business transaction according to your company code. Say okay. Now you have the list of business transactions. Like I said, these are already predefined. So um, by, by uh, of course, the business is going to give you for the consultant, I mean, the business gives um, you the various transactions that will go through the petty cash. So the configuration is actually done according to the business requirements. So I have the business transaction called cash withdrawn from bank into and paid into the interest. So we're going to actually use this business transaction for this particular business scenario. So just double click on that. Then confirm the amount. Let's say we received $2,000 into our interest. Uh, okay, put the recipient. Uh, let's say this was received by John. Put a text. You can say cash withdrawn from bank. Confirm the posting dates. And uh, you can just go to the side. Can, if this is subject to a cost center, you can actually see uh, other options like reference and all that. So, but for now, this is not tied to a cost center. So, uh, we will just uh, have to make do with the available options we have based on the business case. So, when you're done, you select, you highlight the particular line you want to post the transaction to. And also remember that your document status here says red, meaning uh, this transaction is yet to be recorded or saved or posted. So highlight the square by the side and use the option save selected. So click on save selected. You see the document status moved from red to yellow telling you that this document is ready to be posted. And you can also see that at this point, the cash receipt have received um, the information. However, this is yet to be posted to the GL because the document is not yet completed. So while this is highlighted, you can now click on post selected. So if you have four line items, you can actually select the particular one you want to post. So immediately that transaction is posted, you can see the document goes to green, meaning that this transaction has actually been posted. So the next thing we can do is to view the receipt or issue a receipt for this transaction so that the recipient actually has to sign us or um, if it's um, business processes, this is raised and attached to the bank documents for filing. So click on receipt. The system will try to generate a receipt for this transaction. So you have, um, depending on your design, form design, you have the receipt confirmation, you have the company code, the cash journal is coming from, um, who it went to, probably the cashier in the office, you have it with the description, the transaction description, you have the amount net of income tax, and you have the amount in words. Okay, so that's the printout. Remember, just highlight, still unhighlighted, and click on print. Then if you want to see the posting behind the scene, the accounting documents, click on football documents. You can see the accounting and the special purpose le um, ledger. Double click on the accounting ledger, accounting document rather. So you're going to see the accounting behind the scene. That 40 minutes debit, petty cash has been debited and the bank has been credited. You can actually use this tab to you know, uh, drill down further into this transaction. So you can just double click on the line 
to give you details of this transaction. You can see the description. You can see the GL account that was posted to. You can see the document number. So I'm just going to go back. Also, if you need to actually um, attach supporting documents, probably um, it's part of a business process that before any petty cash is posted, um, you have to attach supporting documents to that transaction. So you can go to the services for objects just at the top. And um, if it's a requirement, you can actually attach, create an attachment and attach a support, supporting document for this transaction. If you want, if there is a workflow process attached to this um, particular activity, you can view that workflow process to know who was who um, approved this transaction or who was supposed to approve this transaction. You can view this transaction in different view. You are in the data entry view. You can actually see this transaction in the general ledger view. Basically, just uh, more like the same transaction, but in a different way. <clears throat> so let's go back. And this transaction has been successfully posted. So we have successfully posted a cash receipt into our cash journal. The next we're going to be looking at is to post a cash payment. Um, of course, the same process, um, specify the payment, enter the transaction amount. That's what we're going to do now. So, like I said, this transaction are, these transactions are predefined. If you want to do a cash payment out of the petty cash, you go to cash payment tab, click the drop down, okay, um, select a particular expense you want to make payments for. These are all predefined and they are all tied to the GL. This is a company code, this is the type of transaction. E means expense, B means bank, C means cash, K, D means customer, K means vendor. So, um, these are actually, these are the GLs that are tied to this um, particular transactions. So I want to do an office repair and the amount was $350. Just enter. The recipient of this was uh, James. The text was repair. So we give a detail of this business transaction. Repair of office. Roof. You can enter to validate. Then we also performed another expense. So you can have multiple expenses on that screen. Uh, we did, uh, we gave local transport to a particular staff. So 100,000 was the amount. GL is selected to so local transport expenses. Enter. So we have successfully posted uh, two transactions as our cash payments. So you can select these two transactions and click on save selected. You can also post immediately. Saving is uh, okay. So we have this transaction code. Um, this um, GL account requires a CEO object. So we have to tie uh, this transaction to a cost center. So just a second, we can do that. So this is it. So it's going to go to the cost center. It's okay. Then assign this to a particular cost center. So the concept of cost center is actually just used to manage and track costs. Enter the cost center. Try to validate again by clicking on enter. Okay, so the error is no longer there. So why is also highlighted, I click on post selected so that the system can actually post these transactions appropriately to the GLs that are responsible.
So after the posting, we're going to try to generate a receipt and then view the following documents. So the status still yellow. Oh, so it's finally posted now. So we have our green status for the two transactions. Um, you can undo one. Let's see the receipt for this. You can click on receipts and you can actually see the confirmation for this um, expense. And, um, follow on documents, you can see, first we have introduced the CA, so you can actually run reports on that. If you click on the accounting documents, you can actually see the following documents. Okay, so this is how to post a um, check payment out of your cash journal. Also, we have the functionality of posting a check receipt. Let's see how that will work. So let's say I receive check into my interest. Uh, let's say, uh, so that functionality has been designed here. So we have cash deposit to the bank. Uh, we don't have check. So we're, um, we're, because we need to do that configuration. So let's do a cash. Um, let's say, for example, we had to deposit some funds from the um, interest in, back into the bank. Let's say, for example, um, we need to do a transaction, however, we, uh, the vendor has requested for a, um, a transfer instead of uh, cash. So we're actually raising a check to be paid or we want to actually remit, uh, move funds from our cash journal back into the bank. So you go to cash payments, click the drop down. you can select cash deposited to the bank. Let's say this is $200 can enter, so that's, that's that. You can prefer, uh, provide uh, a description, okay, enter to confirm, select and save selected, and post selected. So you can see that that has actually been done. So you can see that for our transaction for this particular day, which is today, we had a cash receipt of 2,000. We did a cash payment of 6,650, uh, 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 $2,650. So we did a cash payment of $650 and we have an interest balance of 1,350. So if we go and check for this period, we're going to see for the month of February, all the transactions that have been generated so far. So we have a total receipt of five, which has happened in previous months. We have the total cash payments and we have the interest balance um, as a date. So actually this is how to, and also somebody might ask, um, if I mistakenly posted this transaction, how do I delete it from the cash journal? Okay, so let's say I want to reverse this. This was, sorry, this expense was um, not incurred, it was returned. So um, what can we do? We can just highlight this. And you have the option here, this sign with uh, what we call delete rule. You can reverse a um, particular um, cash journal with this functionality. So click on delete row. This entry will be reversed. Do you want to reverse this entry? Just say yes. You provide a reversal reason. Just say reversal in current period. Make sure the posting date is selected. Then say okay. System is going to post a reversal to this transaction and actually close, you can see that it's been posted. So you have a minus 100,000 and a plus 100,000. You can see that our closing balance has increased. So you can actually reverse the transaction that have been posted in your cash journal using 
that functionality. Of course, you can use this to um, select all. You can use this functionality to select all also. You can um, use this functionality to copy a particular line. Okay, so basically this is um, the business process of um, a cash journal. We have talked about the cash journal receipts, how to post the receipts. The check the cash functionality will have to actually um, uh, configure that. That will come in another session. So thank you very much for finding time to um, watch our videos. Remember, for today, we have looked at the concept of cash journal. We have actually learned the, the, uh, that the cash journal is used for specific transactions that involves uh, that provided for. Uh, it, it, it has the idea of the interest system in an organization. We also learned that the expenses for the cash journal are predefined and they are all tied to the ledgers. And also, you can make uh, cash payments into the cash journal from the cash journal. You can receive funds into the cash journal. And we can also reverse a transaction posted in the cash journal. So thank you very much for your time. Please, um, you can visit our YouTube channel for more trainings. Kindly subscribe, like, and share. Also for inquiries on training and support, why not you can send me a WhatsApp message or call uh, plus two three four seven zero three four eight one triple three five. For why you can do me actually an email, and I'll uh, be happy and glad to hear from you. Please, your feedback will be most appreciated. Thank you very much for your time, and uh, stay safe. And uh, you know, enjoy um, this video, and don't forget to reach out to us if you have any questions. Thank you very much for your time. Have a nice day.